It is only the third episode of this series, and I'm already making exceptions. Hello my friends, my name is AJ, and welcome or welcome back to my book nook, and welcome to another episode of my Canadian Author Spotlight. Today I am making a few exceptions to my guidelines for what authors I will be covering, simply because I mean, I want to. As I've said, this series is to cover debut or underappreciated Canadian authors, but the person I am covering today is neither debut or underappreciated. He actually has quite a few awards. But this book I'm covering today is something that's very special to me. It completely changed my perspective on what poetry could be, and I really, really enjoyed it, so I really wanted to talk about it, so that's what we're gonna do. So today I will be talking about Wyla Falls by George Eliot Clark. George Eliot Clark is a Canadian poet originally from Windsor, Nova Scotia. He is a graduate of Dalhousie University, Queen's University, and the University of Waterloo, and he now teaches Canadian and African diasporic literature at the University of Toronto. From 2012 to 2015, he was the Poet Laureate of Toronto, and and from 2016 to 2017, he was the Canadian Parliamentary Poet Laureate. He has written poetry, plays, novels, essays, criticism, and even a memoir, which he's just coming out this year. And in addition to all of his works and his work as Poet Laureates, he also has received many, many awards for his work, so many that I really do not have the time to go through them all, but I'll leave you some links to his website so that you can see for yourself. He's most well known for his work chronicling the experiences and history of Black Canadian communities through a cultural geography that he refers to as Africadia, which is a combination of the words African and Acadia. If you are familiar with Canadian poetry, or if you're just big into the poetry scene anyways, you may know about George Eliot Clark already, but if you're not too familiar with Canadian poetry, or just poetry in general, then you may not be too familiar with him. I know I personally wasn't. I ended up reading Wyla Falls for a literature course, but ended up falling in love with it so much that I really just wanted to cover it with all of you again this year. First things first, I am not a poetry person. I never have been, I never will be. There's really nothing to that. It's just that I've never really gotten into it. Writing poetry is just something that I'm not very good at and I've never really found a lot of joy from reading poetry. Occasionally there'll be a poem or two that I'll find that I really like. Sure, I have a favorite sonnet, but yeah, I'm not gonna go searching it out. Those are just things that I happen to stumble upon. <laughs> Like I said, I read Wyla Falls a couple years ago for a literature class and I absolutely fell in love with it. I thought that it was amazing and I absolutely fell in love with it. It's so unique, it's so interesting, and it's just so well written that I absolutely could not put it down. Now you may be confused. Okay, AJ, you're talking about this like it's a novel, but you're saying it's poetry, so which is it? Well, it's a bit of both. So Wyla Falls is what is called a verse novel, which is basically a collection of narrative poems which all work together to tell a narrative story that would be the length of a normal novel, but it is created through the collection of these poems. So each of these poems in this book are actually quite short. They're mostly about a page or a couple pages long in length. Some of them are shorter, some of them are longer, but even the longer ones are only about three or four pages long. And they tell from the different perspectives of the different characters. Sometimes they're letters, sometimes it's a newspaper clipping, sometimes it's a song or a poem, or sometimes it's formatted just like a paragraph but still has that poetic flow to it. But they all come together to tell the story of the residents of Wyla Falls, mainly focusing on the Clements family and their daughters, each of them with their struggle with love, each of them dealing with their own problems. We see a loss of love, we see new love blooming, we see unrequited love, we see tragedy and racial injustice, and so, so much more. Before I dive too deep into the storyline of Wyla Falls, I do want to dive a little bit into the formatting of it. Like I said, it is a verse novel, so it is broken down into quite a few smaller parts, which is something, as I've mentioned, I really, really like. Firstly, the book is broken down into these chapters, and then within each chapter, there are these little poems that are break it all up together. These take many different forms. Some of them are diary entries. Some of them are just the thoughts that the characters are having. Some of them are songs or poems. One of them is an actual newspaper clipping, and it just works really well to tell the different perspectives of this story. And there's also pictures interspersed between them. Some of these pictures 
are of people, some of them are of locations, but all together they're very real and they really help to tie the story together. Because with the combination of these pictures and of the things like newspaper clippings and journal entries and, and letters, it all works together to make it seem like these were real people and that all these documents were collected to tell a story of this town. But they're not. Obviously it's a fictional story. While the Falls is not a real place, but it really works well together to make it seem real and really bring the characters to life, which I thought was a really unique way of doing it and really, really blew me away. Diving right back into the story again, as I have said, the story follows the residents of Wyla Falls, but it does mainly focus on the Clemens family. We have Cora and Saul, the parents, as well as their sons and their daughters, but we focus mainly on their three daughters, Amarantha, Sella, and Shelly, and one of their sons, Othello. We get to see this family interact with each other. We do get to focus on each of the daughters and how they approach love and how they approach relationships. We get to see how caring they are for each other and how much they love each other. And we do get to see love in all of its forms, both romantic and familiar. We get to see new love blossoming. We get to see an unrequited crush. And we even get to see what love looks like when it is falling apart and when it has soured within the parents, Cora and Saul. We also take a look at a character by the name of Xavier who has been exiled for several years who has returned and is dying to express his love to Shelley Clemens. We get to see the beauty of the world through love and nature and family, but then we also get to see the dark sides of the world and of this community through a murder and the racial injustice that follows that and the terrible acts that certain people in the community have committed. And we get to see both sides of that coin and it interweaves itself so beautifully and complexly that it creates this very real and effective story. Because none of these characters are side characters. It's very much an ensemble cast. Each character gets their own section where they get to kind of talk about what they're feeling and we get their full story. No one is just a side character that we see nothing about. We get to hear about everyone's stories. And I really like that because that's the thing with life is sometimes you're sitting and maybe just people watching on the street and you don't even realize how complex these people's lives are and how complex the world is, you know? Everyone has their own story and we only get to see our own. And oftentimes when you read a book or watch a movie, you're focusing on one character and their story and you don't really get to see the behind the scenes of what's going on with the other characters. So I really enjoy this. I really enjoyed having that ensemble cast where we get to learn about every single character and bring it all together. It makes it very complex. It makes it very real and it just, really blew my mind. <laughs> I know I keep saying that over and over again, but it's so true. It's just absolutely beautifully written. I, like I said, I'm not a big poetry person, but I can recognize when poetry is very beautiful. And this book does it so well. It's got this beautiful depiction of family and love. And it's also got this beautiful depiction of tragedy and it really pulls at your heartstrings and it really makes you feel upset and angry and sad and you go through this entire roller coaster of emotions but it feels very real and it feels so well done and so poetic and even the sections that are just sort of describing what's going on are done so well. I know I'm not reviewing poetry very well. You probably want me to talk more about the structure of the poems and the word choice and whatever but like I said I'm not someone who's ever really been into poetry so you're gonna have to settle for me reviewing this book of poetry as if it were a novel. <laughs> So, as you probably noticed, there's no spoiler section on this video, but that's mainly because none of my opinions really include spoilers. So let's just dive in with what my final thoughts are. I really, really love this book. I think that if you like poetry or not, you will still really like it. I think it's very powerful. I think it's very beautifully written. The story is so complex and the characters feel so real that it really immerses you 
into this world. Like I said, I'm not a big poetry person, so I can't break down the structure of these poems for you. I don't think I'd be able to, I'm willing to admit that. But I don't think you have to, to appreciate this, because like I said, it feels very real, you know? You're reading someone's letters and diary entries, and everything just works together so well to create this wonderful story that just blew my mind the first time I read it. I had no idea that poetry could be like this. I had no idea that you could make a story like this by combining so many small parts, but you really can and it really, really works. I don't really have many spoiler-filled opinions on this book. I suppose you could say that me mentioning that there's a murder is a spoiler, but it's written in the synopsis, so if you read the synopsis you would know. And I don't really have a lot of bad things to say about this book. I think it's so well done, I think it's so well written, and I just think it's so effective that it even made me, someone who's not into poetry, enjoy a book of poetry. So overall I'm gonna give this five poems out of five, which I think is our first five out of five on this channel. And I also highly suggest that you give Wyla Falls by George Eliot Clark a read yourself. But that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stick around if you want to see more videos like this from me. And tell me, did you read Wyla Falls and enjoy it? Did this video make you want to read it? Are you someone who's really into poetry or are you someone who's like me and could never really get into it? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to have a conversation with all of you. As always, I have included the link in the description so that if you want to find out a little bit more about George Eliot Clark and his works and his achievements you can go check that out for yourself but that is it for me today I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see all of you lovely people in the next video bye